you know what's really refreshing is that the fears that I had 20 years ago or 20 odd years ago that actually made me leave uh, Canada, I'm now seeing voiced all over all over media, let's say, whether it's YouTube or TikTok. I'm actually seeing a lot of young people who are saying, hey, we don't want to be slaves to the rat race. We don't want to be tied to this day in and day out slavery just to pay the bills and pay the taxes and barely eat and barely sleep, you know, just so that we can be a part of society. You know, that's, that's what made me and attach and walk away. Um, many people might say, oh, wow, you were offered such an amazing future being Canadian and having all those opportunities. Yeah, opportunities to be enslaved, basically, to live in debt. Um, I don't know many people who don't have debt, whether it's a mortgage, car payments, payment for this, payment for that. Um, it's sickening. I don't know how I would have slept if I was half a million dollars in debt. Knowing that, okay, well, if I don't do this job, if I walk away or I can't handle it anymore, I'm going to lose my house, lose my car, uh, lose my dignity and status, basically, in Canadian society. And I just didn't want to risk that. There's no way I was going to risk that. Just that anxiety people must have. You know, I've never really had. And now that I'm seeing this next generation coming up behind me that's feeling it, the same way, but voicing it because, you know, 20 odd years ago, I didn't have a way to tell the world. I just recognized the feeling in myself and I said, listen, either you're in and you got to go all in and no regrets, or now is your chance. Get away and build a life somewhere else while you can. Get out while you can. And that voice just never went away. It was always looking to the exit door. No matter what jobs I had, no matter who I was dating or where I went, I always had my eye on the exit door. And when you live life like that, you know, hey, something's wrong or something, you know, is pulling me in a different direction. So, you know, why am I not listening to that voice? Like, what is holding me back? And at that point, I didn't have anything material to hold me back. I didn't have any, you know, deep, deep relationships to stop me or to, you know, make me reconsider. And so, you know, thank the universe, I was able to leave and I literally have no regrets. I'm so grateful and so thankful every day from where I have come to where I've ended up. And for some people it might seem backward, but it's okay because I'm seeing now and I'm encouraged that young people are not buying in to the lies. They're not buying into the slavery. They're not buying into trying to create this material life that is draining them of all of their life source so they can have a roof over their head. So what? So they can pay taxes, so the governments can misspend it, you know, in your name and, and no one even asks you. You know, half your paycheck goes, you don't even see it. And the small things that you do do for yourself, you know, you're made to feel guilty for. Or if you don't work hard enough or if you don't work 40, 50, 60 hours a week or two jobs, you're lazy. I mean, that's just not the point of living. I'd rather live hum humbler, have less, but have my freedom. And I've succeeded in that, I think, partially. I mean, I, I consider myself partially retired. I work when I want to because I don't have any debt hanging over my head. Because I didn't allow my desires or expectations to exceed my abilities to earn. And when I did earn, well, I saved. I didn't go spend it on you know, crazy things. I didn't allow my desires to outpace my earning but just because I was earning higher I didn't allow my desires to become exponential and so by just kind of maintaining like a line of, of, of satisfaction of like you know knowing when is enough for me I know what's enough I know what I need to be happy happiness is not over there you know happiness is not over some horizon or you know over the fence you know, identifying those simple things that you need to feel like yourself, you know, which honestly, if I'm drinking a coffee in India or in Eastern Europe or in Canada, like how different is that coffee? But <laughs> what are the price differences? You know, it's okay. I don't want to pay 10 bucks for my coffee. I really don't. I'd rather pay a buck. 
and finding the things that made me happy, like my morning coffee, like, you know, the odd, the odd beer here and there, um, the odd weekend trip, the odd hike in the mountains, whatever it was that I needed to feel good. They weren't expensive. They weren't things that cost a lot of money. And I was easily able to put myself in that position to have them no matter what my economic situation was. When I was 25 or 45, my desires really haven't changed. I still shop the same way. I don't buy $500 boots. You know, I don't spend thousands and thousands on exotic trips. I always look for a deal. I always go when there's a sale. I don't know, maybe it's just old school mentality, but why? What, what, who's watching? Who to show off? To whom should I show off for? For whom? You know, I, I want to savor those things for myself. I'm not there performing for others. And it's these performances that I think, and obviously with social media, um, people have kind of had this feeling that, okay, we are sharing or we are showing up online to perform, but rather I think it's a platform to, to share the authenticity that we've found by living in contrast to all the technology that we're bombarded with. And more and more people are just fed up and they don't want to be a part of that system anymore. And I'm so proud because I'm just so proud of this next generation, even though I'm sure there's a lot of people pissing and shitting on you guys, saying, oh yeah, you guys are lazy. No, I, I think you guys are brave to want to come up with a different system of, of, of living and working. You know, <laughs> living, living to work <laughs> is ridiculous, you know. You work a little, you live you know, you go back to the well, you work hard when you have to, but what's wrong with enjoying life? Why is that such a sin? Why is that looked upon so derogatorily? I, I don't understand that. I've enjoyed myself and call me, head, call me a hedonist. I would consider myself more an Epicurean, but I love life. In, in all its colors, in its happiness and its sorrows, in its challenges and its victories, it feels so good to be alive. To be able to feel and, and indulge sometimes and sometimes fast and deny yourself and then share. So yeah, I'm just really encouraged and hopeful when I see that people are just so over it, young people especially. I'm just really proud of you guys. So I gotta go feed the chickens. <laughs> But I just want to say cheers to you guys. Keep on trucking. Don't give up. You're on the right path. What's up, Chicky?